Hey, welcome back. It's me, Britt Reacts. And today we're going to react to Shoe on Head talking about Lady Ballers. Let's see what she has to say. So I spent a few days lurking around the internet looking for reviews of the Daily Wire's new movie, Lady Ballers. In a world where women's sports is being transformed, the Daily Wire calls foul with the most triggering comedy of the year, Lady Ballers. And I could not for the life of me find one that was even remotely neutral. They were either very not for the life of me find one that was even remotely. Critical Drinker made a review while I was filming this. It was pretty neutral. <laughs> so is she a comic? Um, I'm, I'm first thoughts, first impressions. Her microphone, is it large or is it just where it is placed in the frame of everything? You know, thing, if something's closer to the camera, it's going to look larger. I'm just asking. I want a giant mic. Like, is, is that what it is? Also, her eye makeup, she looks like a baby doll. She's stunning with her like swooping. All right, I'm 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 into this, you guys. I, I don't know what, what this is about holy i think i assumed it was about female basketball players um if you don't know my husband is a division one college basketball women's college basketball coach um has been for many years and so we are a we're a basketball household but more than anything we support women's basketball like nobody's business and so i think i thought that's what this was about i don't know what it's about um but i'm excited i'm excited i feel like i'm gonna have an opinion either way neutral they were either very progressive people talking about how the movie was awful without actually seeing the movie or right-wing daily wire fans saying it was a great movie the best movie ever even the rotten tomato score does not help much because you have oh. to be a paying member of the daily wire to watch the movie so i decided oh it i'm gonna review it no huh also, I've heard from several different little birdies that Jeremy Boring, the creator and main character of this film, is a fan of mine. So, uh, hi, Jeremy. Uh, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Oh! No, I'm not. So let's just quickly get into, like, a summary of the movie Wait. before I give my <coughs> personal opinion of it. The movie opens up in 2008, and we see the main character, played by Jeremy Boring, coaching a high school basketball team. His team is down at halftime, but he gives a speech in the locker room and leads them to victory. Fast forward to present day, and Jeremy is now a high school teacher and a divorced dad. He has a good relationship with his daughter and seemingly is friendly with his ex-wife and even her new boyfriend. And in this house, we believe leave type lib played by matt walsh in a wig in a blink and you miss it scene jeremy's character is fired over the phone and looks for new employment he returns to a store he used to work at which has been turned into a drag bar there he sees one of the guys who played on his basketball team all those years ago alex wearing a wig and working at the restaurant. Jeremy convinces Alex to join a running competition for some reason, but Alex forgot to take off his wig from work, and then they think he's a trans woman, so they enter him in the women's sprint instead. Going against women, Alex obviously dominates the competition and wins the prize money. Alex and Jeremy decide to get the old basketball team of has back together in order to qualify for what is basically the Olympics or something. They convince them pretty easily by explaining that they will be winners again if they dress up like women and compete against women. Predictably, they dominate the women's teams and make their way to the championship game. At the championship game, no. the opposing team shows up and is composed of entirely big black dudes also pretending to be women. Jeremy has a change of heart and tells the team what they've been doing is wrong and substitutes his team for his daughter and his friends. They lose big time but jeremy and his ex-wife and all the team are happy for doing the right thing the end the whole movie was kind of i just want to applaud her for such a well done quick brief review like that was girl that was spectacular like i feel like i don't ever need to watch it or hear about it again it was a lot and i okay i don't know what the day Oh God, I feel like y'all about to fire me up just for admitting that. I, d I don't know what the Daily Wire is. I try to tell you all the time. I, I don't know. I just, if it's not Jesus, my family, or like good music, I, I just, you know, I'm out here minding my business. But am I to assume, please correct me, am I understanding that the Daily Wire 
is like a conservative. And this is like a, a, like a parody on what's been going on with uh, the, the debate and the, the, the fight for trans uh, individuals being allowed into sports with natural born men and or women. Or am I just completely lost? Help me. Okay. Um, another question. She's got a ginormous American flag behind her, which only tells me she has pride in her country. And it's weird because nowadays you feel like, oh, she must be this, right? Because all of a sudden we are not all Americans. I don't know. We Some of us like don't have American pride. Um, so I don't want to assume. But in the way that she said, I'm sorry, it means maybe she didn't enjoy the film. So is she... Left, right, neutral, in between, where is she? I'm just on overload and I'm trying to process, so I'm asking you to help me. Thank you, leave your comments down below. And all the team are happy for doing the right thing. The end. The whole movie was kind of sold as like, remember when movies were offensive? Remember humor? And okay. if I'm being completely honest, this movie lacked in both humor and offense. Let's talk Ooh. about the humor first, then we will talk about the offense. We'll return after these messages. I love her Whenever editing. a big controversy oh, happens, it's glasses. always hard to get some unbiased <coughs> coverage of what exactly is happening. That's why for almost three years now, I have been using Ground News. Ground News oh, is a website is an and app that gives readers an easy and transparent way to read the news. For example, when we look at that scandalous story about the Senate staffer incident, we can see that it's been covered by 99 Whoa. news outlets. If I scroll down, I can see every article about it. Every headline has tags that show me the political bias, reliability, oh, and even the ownership of the outlet. For instance, how the Washington Post is owned by Jeff Bezos, or how Fox is owned by the Murdoch family. And it's really interesting to see how the narrative differs depending on the source. From the left, Senate staffer alleged by conservative outlets to have had a scandalous time. Okay, so I think I've understood this. First of all, this is a great ad. I didn't realize it was an ad. I, I would benefit from something like this because it just puts everything in one place and it's so informative that I wouldn't have to like ask y'all all the time. Great ad, girl. Now I feel like I got to go buy this. Um, so is she more right wing and this movie was super left and so she's going to tell us how trash it was? Well, I... <sighs> Senate staffer alleged by conservative outlets to have had a scandalous time in a hearing room is no longer employed. <laughs> alleged and from the right democratic senator fire staffer who filmed <laughs> gay a scandalous escapade Look at the difference. in hearing room i just love how they they are the only ones to add gay <laughs> one of my favorite features of ground news has to be the blind spot feature which shows you news stories that have only been covered by one side of the political aisle wow. and it is a great and easy way to stay informed and right now it's their best deal of the year 40 percent off unlimited access by going to ground.news slash shoe or clicking huh. the link in the video description. Thank you, Ground News, for sponsoring this video, and thank you, the viewer, for not skipping the ad. Thanks, Shu. I was not quite sure of the tone this movie was going for. When I first saw the trailers, I thought maybe it was gonna be like a spoof or a parody of like early 2000s comedy sports films. Like the trailer had the font and the slapstick and the announcer guy. From hero to shero. Rob Schneider is a carrot. Like I kind of thought it was gonna be a more self-aware, ironic type of movie, a la Zoolander or Tropic Thunder or okay. something. But from the beginning of the movie, it was obvious that was not happening. It just kind of felt like a Adam Sandler movie. Oh. Not like 90s Adam Sandler, not like <laughs> Uncut Gems Adam Sandler, but like Jack <laughs> Bill Adam I'm still recovering. <laughs> and a good laugh will send me spiraling into the most phlegmy, offensive cough. I cannot. As soon as she said Adam Sandler, I knew exactly what version of Adam Sandler she meant. All right. All right. I like this chick um, because she's just so well versed in what she's talking about. And it doesn't feel divisive. It just feels educated and strong it feels like a strong opinion um on anything not left or right i'm just saying like she could talk you um into being fully aware across the board about something and i like that and that's why i think a lot of times i try to shy away from not 
speaking so freely because I know I'm not well versed on something um, in the way that she is. This is admirable to me. Um, and again, it's not about a side. It's just like this is a woman who's clearly done her research and m may she be biased to her beliefs aren't we all biased to our beliefs but um it doesn't feel swaying or trying you know per trying to be persuasive it's just, it just feels like listen here are the facts do with it what you will but it's clear do you know what i mean i'm learning so much so much i feel like it's like class is in session it felt like a Adam Sandler movie. Not I like can't 90s get over her Adam eyes. Sandler, not like Uncut Gems Adam Sandler, but like Jack and Jill Adam Sandler. I guess I had higher comedic expectations for the okay. Daily Wire for some reason, but every time the movie tried to do like actual movie things and movie humor, it was bad. I went in thinking the political parts of the movie would be the corniest and the worst parts. No. But they were actually better than when the movie tried to be a movie. A lot of the jokes were extremely predictable and like jokes we've heard millions of times. The comedic timing on a lot of the jokes was awful. Oh, Things just lingered for a really long time. The pacing was all over the place in this entire movie. It felt like it actually skipped some scenes because something would happen and I'd be like, wait, like, why did that happen? Did I miss something? No. Yeah, she did say if you like blinked for a second, you missed that he got fired from his job in the movie. I cannot stand a a movie with holes. I can't stand a movie that the plot doesn't make sense. I Y'all know I struggle to watch movies anyway, but at the minute I feel like this is not coming together, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. And it's not funny. And the timing of the jokes are bad. Clock me out, boss. I don't want to be at work today. The pacing was all over the place in this That's entire movie. Awful. It felt like it actually skipped some scenes because something would happen and I'd be like, wait, like, why did that happen? Did I miss something? <coughs> no, I didn't miss Excuse something. Me. That was just thrown in there. And it kind of just felt like they threw them in because they remember like, oh, this is supposed to be a comedy. Also something like randomly exploded. And I had no idea why. I still have no idea why, but I did laugh. I laughed three times. Once was when Damn Matt it. Walsh's lib character was trying like way too hard to be a good ally. And he was like, I see you oh, because gosh. I've known people like that. Uh -huh. We've all known uh -huh. people like that. Uh -huh. The second time was when Jeremy Boring called his ex-wife a this turf. Because really I don't know, it was just kind of funny to see that word in a movie. It was just kind of like jarring. Third and final time I left was when Listen. Michael Knowles and Brett Cooper were the newscasters increasingly every time it cuts back to them they're trying way too hard they're like overcompensating to look not oh brett racist. brett brett that looks like she does the com yeah i know her um they're trying way too hard they're like overcompensating to look not racist not bigoted and michael knows goes get off my land white man and i don't know the comedic timing was well done for once maybe i was just deprived and starved for humor at that point. She's going in. But it, it did get a laugh out of me. Humor is subjective, so I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of like slapstick. It's like, oh, a man in a wig gets punched in the balls. A lot of the jokes were already outplayed years ago to the point where I was honestly surprised they didn't throw in that clip of the crying Hillary supporter somewhere. Also, Jeremy Boring is a BDSM sub through the whole thing. He's constantly like being slapped and licked and tied up by women through the entire movie. What? Huh? So that was interesting. Quentin Tarantino moment. Let's talk about the offense part. I know you're not a woman. Hey, you know how he identifies. Like I said, this movie was very oversold as this boundary pushing, triggering commentary. With the most triggering comedy of the year. And you would honestly think that by reading like, left-wing news outlets. Like both sides were selling this movie as this like super edgy, <laughs> offensive movie, but it really wasn't. Like, yeah, some of the jokes were like, trans people, am I right? This literally feels like it was a, in no shade uh, in any way, but like a, what, what, like the, 
dang, what do they call like the, the the kids who are in like school and they their assignment is to make a film? I cannot for the life of me think of what they're called. But like we used to cast them all the time when I was an agent. We used to cast like our talent who our kid talent in their movies. Oh, it's getting on my nerves. But that's what I'm getting from this. It feels like it was very like amateur. But these sound like these these were like big deal Hollywood names. This movie is this as this like super boring? edgy, <laughs> offensive movie, but it really wasn't. Like, like yeah, film. some of the jokes were like trans people, am I right? But they weren't very clever or funny or new. I'm not one of those people who think we can't make offensive jokes about certain groups of people. Of course not. In fact, I think that's a big part of acceptance. I feel like it's fair game to make fun of everyone. Gay, trans, straight, disabled, man, woman, black, brown, Asian, normal. Nobody should be off the table. But despite the outrage and the I hype- I like her, guys. This movie was kind of milk toast. Honestly, the people milk calling toast. it like super bigoted and transphobic are giving them way too much credit. And maybe I'm just really online, but I've seen trans people make jokes on Twitter about trans people that, that were, were way more, more offensive. Edgy and offensive than this movie. I'm just saying, if you're going to sell yourself like this, I'm not expecting jokes like my boomer mom would make. I'm not oh. expecting jokes that I made in 2015. You know what I mean? Also, a lot of the jokes aren't gonna age very well. There was a Dylan Mulvaney, like, Bud Light joke in there. Like, in 10 years, like, is anyone gonna remember that? I don't know, it is a really big deal to them, so maybe. Honestly, South Park did a way better job at tackling the I'm subject. Sure. And one of the I'm things sure. South Park does very well is make fun of both sides, which this movie never did even once. And I think was a huge problem, and I think, held it back a lot. I understand that this is basically just a Daily Wire fan film. Like this was just a movie for the fans. This was just a movie for the okay. people. They want to see Ben Shabibo and they want to see their guys. They want to see their favorite Gen guys. Ben. They want to hear the two ben gender jokes. Say, hey. But I feel like they hey. really could have thrown in some jabs and some jokes about conservatives or the right. I feel like being more self-aware would have made this movie more grounded. And okay, now I feel like she's she's just hey, uh, she's just a smart girl. I don't know who she leans towards, and qu quite frankly, it doesn't matter to me because uh, y'all know uh, I lean towards Jesus. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I, it's hard to tell. I agree with her though. Like everything in comedy is fair game. Everyone is fair game. And that's what keeps it non-offensive. It's like, if it's open to the public, then it's, then the, you know what I mean? I agree with her on that. Um, and so if something is not balanced as far as comedy, then yeah, it does feel like What's going on? I feel like being more self-aware would have made this movie more grounded and mm. possibly funnier. Maybe have like an in-universe daily wire who are making YouTube videos and live streaming about the situation at hand. Like maybe one of the commentators from the in-universe daily wire confronts the team and the team has to pretend to disagree with them. Like, I don't know what you're talking about, bigot. Maybe even make the character Ben Shapiro. Like have Ben Shapiro play an exaggerated version of, of ben, ben Shapiro. I don't know, I feel like it was missing something like that because like all the she jabs at liberals film. were so cartoonishly over the top that it almost felt like, it felt like I was scrolling through cat turds. <laughs> truth social page if you're going for this universe where everything is amped up to 100 everyone's just a walking stereotype i think mm. it would have been a good move to go a little bit south park because otherwise you're just kind of being like any of these other hollywood things that pokes fun of just the right but like the opposite and if you want to stand out and attract a more like normy sort of apolitical swing voter demographic to your movie. I feel like you gotta be a little smarter and more self-deprecating with your jokes or else you're just the same thing we've seen five million times and we're all tired of. Like the old dodgeball movie and like those old comedies from the early 2000s, they were not targeted towards a certain demographic. They were just targeted towards people who wanted to laugh. And I feel like this movie could have- And strangely enough, those movies now are like, what people cry for a cancel culture to be because of like you can't watch that movie now because it's so offensive like we turned on Aladdin the other day you know Disney now has this whole disclaimer like um you know because they don't want to offend people but it's like if we weren't offended then I don't know I don't know but I I so agree with this young lady I think she's fantastic can we be friends 
Um, I'm laughing at myself for thinking this had anything to do with women's basketball. But hey, that's me judging a title by a title um, and reacting to something completely blind. I had no idea. I just was like, oh, lady ballers. I, I have some education and wisdom and knowledge on that. Mm -mm. Nope. I'm a baby. Demographic, they were just targeted towards people who wanted to laugh. And I feel like this movie could have been done that way, but it was just way too politically charged on one side. Of course it was, again, it's the Daily Wire. I, I get it, I get it. I'm just I'm, I'm just adding my opinion, what I would have done. Apparently they only worked on this for six months. The production value looks fine, but it really shows in the writing. You can have all the money the and writing. make a decent looking film, but money can't buy you talent. They needed to get some actual comedians or comedy writers in on this, which might be hard because nobody probably wants their name attached to the Daily Wire. My advice to the Daily Wire crew I gotta is if you're figure gonna out make the Daily Wire is. Political Let me Google comedy this. in the year 2023 when like everyone's like sick of this bullshit. They're sick of the culture war. Try to poke fun at both sides. Maybe hire Ryan Long to help you on the next one because he's pretty good at that. And maybe I'm just yearning for something that is that and maybe it doesn't exist and will never exist oh well also this movie didn't feel like it had a real end okay daily wire fight the left media with the right values so this is a right wing uh media outlet it says build the future of america with news and entertainment from the number one counter culture outlet home of the biggest names in conservative media jordan peterson is on here uh yeah. It says, am I racist? Racist question mark. Watch now. Wow. I had no clue. All right. So, yeah, then this was a conservative film poking fun at and making over the top stereotypical uh, content about the left. And now I understand. Um, she seems quite neutral asking for poking at both. Oh, poking might have been, you know. Sorry, okay. Doesn't exist and <laughs> will never exist. Oh well. Also, this movie didn't feel like it had a real ending. Out of nowhere, oh, his I daughter is feeling that. insecure and says, I want to be a boy because boys are better than girls. And Jeremy Boring goes on this whole like motivational speech to how like actually like women are great and they're great at raising families and femininity and blah, 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 blah. But it feels so out of place and unearned it felt like a completely different movie out of nowhere like maybe they should have shown so the daughter overhearing jeremy's plans to like make his team dress up like women because men can beat women and maybe the daughter starts to feel insecure when she overhears that but that didn't happen it just kind of came out of nowhere it just became like female empowerment <laughs> daily wire gone woke that's also the thing like Every time this movie felt like it was becoming a movie, it just ran away from it. For example, one of Jeremy's team members sees the opposing team of women like crying and being upset because like they beat them. And he starts to have like second These thoughts wigs. and a change of heart and he feels These bad. Wigs. And I remember being like, oh my God. Criminal. It's becoming a movie. Something's happening. And literally like a minute later, that's just gone. It's gone. It's just, it immediately moves on to more overdone jokes about trans people and libs and jokes I've heard from funnier people seven years ago. And that's the biggest thing. There were no stakes in this movie. Like they could have made it so Jeremy Boring's character was about to be evicted or something. Like they could have shown him living in a really shitty apartment. Maybe he's losing connection with his daughter and his daughter thinks he's a loser who never wins at anything. But there was really nothing driving this motivation for him to win this competition besides winning. I didn't feel bad for the main character. I really was not rooting for him. He was kind of a, he was kind of a dirtbag. I didn't <laughs> find myself like wanting him to win or the team. Like there was nothing likable about these people. Matt Walsh's character was the most <laughs> likable character in this movie. Matt Walsh. And believe me, my favorite show is Always Sunny. I love when characters are dirtbags. But in Always Sunny, the voice of reason <coughs> is the audience. The characters are the butt of the joke. She is so well-versed and educated on like TV and, and storytelling and, and, and screenwriting, script writing. She's so, wow, who is this girl? Where did she come from? How late am I? Y'all know I know I'm late. I know it, I know it, I'm sorry. 
Um, I feel like, you know, recently, um, if you haven't seen it, I sat down and reacted to some different type of content with my cousin, uh, Mr. L. Boyd, and it's kind of opened my algorithm, not just my mind, but my algorithm to like different types of content. And I think this is phenomenal. Um, I don't know, you know, let me know how you feel. We all have to evolve. We can't all just stay the same. And I know sometimes people don't like when their favorite reactors start reacting to other things, but I'm here to say like, I just want to evolve and y'all know I love to learn new things. Um, um, and this is so interesting to me. What else does she talk about? What's her IQ? <laughs> Shoe on head, can we be friends? Always Sunny, the voice of reason is the audience. The characters are the butt of the joke. The characters mm. here were not the butt of the joke. It just completely dropped the ball in, in so many different ways. No pun intended. In conclusion, if you are a fan of The Daily Wire, I this movie that. is definitely for you. You'll point and soy face at the cameos from Ben Shapiro and all your favorite guys. You'll agree with all the jokes. You'll be spoon fed everything agree you with agree with. <laughs> this movie is just one big circle jerk pandering to you. And I get why that would be enjoyable. So bone apple teeth. But for everyone else, I, I honestly, I'm that sorry. would be enjoyable. What the, what so bone that? Just made some cornbread, but I've heard bone apple teeth, okay? But the corn on top of the bread, that's offensive. Apple teeth. <clears throat> but for everyone else, I, I honestly don't know. I feel like it being behind a Daily Wire subscription really hurts it. Like, oh, right. you guys should really make it available for everyone to watch right. so we could be the judge. I watched it with my husband who is a conservative and he had a very okay, so she's similar not a opinion conservative. to me. He basically just liked the Michael Knowles cameo parts. I mostly found myself just rewriting this movie in my mind after every that. scene was over. And I guess it's because I myself miss like goofy, stupid, edgy movies. Remember when you could say But this was just kind of nothing. You shouldn't blindly trash nothing. it because of political reasons. I think it, it's possible to think a movie's pretty good, even if you don't agree with the politics in it. And you shouldn't blindly defend it because of political reasons. You shouldn't blindly defend it because it Absolutely. owns the libs. I'm gonna eat this pile of shit because the other team hates piles right. of shit. Also, Michael Knowles and Matt Walsh and all these guys have been doing reaction videos to critics of this movie, but I highly doubt they'll do one of mine. I don't think I was triggered sufficiently enough. Right. That is my review. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? If you didn't see it, what is your favorite offensive movie? If you like this video, please consider donating to my Patreon. It helps the channel a lot. Link down below. And I will see you guys soon with a new video. Bye. Merry Christmas. Wow. Guys, I think she's fantastic. All right. I, I want to dive in because I just want to understand her more. She said her husband is conservative. I feel like she is just a very um, well balanced person who can probably find truth on both sides which I think I relate to a lot if you've watched any of my content um, especially the ones that are more political-esque because I don't really dive into political stuff too much um, I like to keep it light this felt light to me um, uh, so yeah this was fantastic I really like her let me know your thoughts in the in the comments let me know what else I should watch from her and go and have the day you deserve